back here again for another celebration. Uh, we certainly are thankful to God that he has blessed us to be here. Uh, we're always so very grateful that he has blessed us to remain alive. Is that right? Uh, it certainly is a blessing to be in truth uh, and certainly a blessing to uh, desire to continue to follow truth. Uh, we certainly give due respect always uh, to our deceased brethren of the past, uh, the prophets of old, and the apostles, our brethren are long gone, but God's word, as we often say, it continues to live and will abide forever. Uh, we certainly give due respect to our dear beloved brother, Pastor Jennings, as always, We've known him for quite some time now. We thank God for him and for the work that God is doing through him. Uh, due respect is also due to all the ministering brethren everywhere. Now, there's many of them that are here, uh, many that are not here, but the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is very, very far-reaching, and it's going to cover the entire globe, and it's going to do that before the Lord comes. Uh, pray for our brethren overseas, and not just for them, but certainly for the congregations and the people that are in their various areas and those that are still coming in. Uh, we certainly give uh, respect to the ones that are here. Uh, can't call them all by name, uh, but certainly we thank God for them. Uh, before going any further, we just want to say thank God for the brass band. Uh, sounds good to me, and uh, certainly uh, as time goes on, uh, God is going to give Pastor Jennings everything he needs to get this word over and to worship God in spirit and in truth. So we thank God for the brass band. Uh, we're looking for greater things from them as, uh, as time goes on. Uh, as you know what we do occasionally, uh, we call upon a few of our ministers. Uh, we're going to just call upon two tonight uh, and because we want to get to uh, the meal of the evening. Uh, yesterday's meal was very good. Very good. Very, very good. And uh, I want you to certainly keep the Word of God always in your mind. Uh, the scripture says, line must be upon line and precept upon precept. Is that right? Here a little and there a little, which means you must continue to build on what you've heard in the past until you get to a point of perfection or a point of completion in God. Is that right? Sit patiently as we're here tonight from Minister Avilius from Florida. Minister Abraham Avilius. Is he here? Minister Abraham. Minister Abraham. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Oh, such a privilege to be back here again. Um, you know, time be moving so fast. And we have went through so many different things in the last few years. Uh, it is impressive. But nevertheless, God has not stopped working. And his mercy constantly reaching out to people. Even when we was closed down for COVID, we baptized more people than when we was having service. I mean, we was, um, I had set up a pool in my yard out in the country and I had some people coming all the way over there and get baptized. Uh, we cr kind of roam around the state baptizing people, hosting services at a park so that it was the only place we could hold service. But nevertheless, God continued to reach out those that want to be saved. And it's wonderful to have a message that cannot be stopped. It just, it just won't stop. And I, and I do have a testimony that I want to share with the church but, but I don't want to take too much time, but it is a good testimony. Um, 
I have been, I have been missing an action for about a year now. Um, last March, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And when we first took her to the doctor and began to do some studies and tests, uh, they say that her cancer was in her abdomen, on the lining of the abdomen on the inside. And they set up an operation. They done some tests and run some chemotherapy. And that was so rough on her because you know, people getting up in age, so, so it's tough on the body. And when they did the operation, actually the cancer was spread a lot more than they believed at the beginning. So, I mean, they cut her open from one side to the other and scraped all the inside of the lining of her abdomen. She went through chemotherapy, got an infection, and when I come home one Friday, I find her in the couch in the living room, irresponsive. And I called 911, we got the ambulance there. Ambulance came, picked her up, we took her to the emergency room. And she was in ICU, irresponsive for one week. And as we were spending time, you know, because they only allow one person to be in the emergency room at a time, when I was there, my turn came up and I was there holding her hand and I was just sitting there asking God and telling the Lord, I know our life is here is short and one day we all got to get out of here. And just having a conversation with the Lord and asking him and, 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 and pleading with him and simply saying to him, if I ever done any good, I want you to take that in account for what I'm asking you because I'm not ready to live this life without my mama. And I have, I got excellent parents and they have forsaken so many things to get me where I am today that, you know, I was just telling the Lord, I know you're going to take me one day, but let it not be today. And all I'm asking you is to extend her life a little time where I can enjoy it a little more. And right then I felt the mercy of God run through my body. And it went, and it went past right through my hand. I felt it when it passed right through my hand. And the very next day she woke up and she began to do better and better and better and better. So, so today, I, I, at 80 years old, she cooking, she walking in the yard, taking her walks out in the yard. So what I want to tell you, church, and I want to tell my ministering brethren and everybody who do anything for God, don't you ever believe that everything you do is in vain and then nobody watching you. God is watching you. He watches every single thing we do. And in those moments when life hit you because life will hit you sooner or later when those times where all the all the pretendings and, and all the fake stuff has got to be put to the side and you really got to get a hold of the God mer the mercy of God I'm telling you he is real he is real and there is nobody that can stop him whenever he's willing to do something for you. The devil himself can stop him. So I encourage all my minister brothers, 
When you get tired of running and traveling and going from place to place, just remember that one day you're going to need the Lord. And when you're going to need him, he's going to look at your labor. He's going to look at your work. And he's going to extend his mercy. And going to listen to your prayers. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us different from all other religions. We have a God that is real. We have a God that has mercy. And we definitely have a God that can heal you. Don't you let the doctor tell you that it's your last day. The one who says the last word is God himself. I miss you guys more than you can think. And because I was going for about a year, you know, I had people, people even told Pastor Jens, oh, Minister Abraham done left First Church, he just don't want to tell you. I said, well, one that devil want me to quit. One thing I can tell you, I'm game though. I'm game. That stuff don't do nothing but put fuel on my lamp. And the haters, the line gets longer and longer. But that don't do nothing but fuel, put fuel on my lamp. I'm more fired up now than I ever been. <laughs> I, missed, I missed Pastor Jennings coming. He came to Florida for, for the first time in like three years. He don't ever visit us. And I hated it when he was there. I missed him. But you know the main reason he don't hardly visit us? Because he knows I'm working. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, this, ain't, this is one brother you ain't got to supervise too much. I ain't going to steal the money. I ain't going to... Take over, I ain't going to call myself a name that don't belong to me. I ain't going to preach nothing that is not in the scriptures. I ain't going to wake up one day with a dream, with a new vision. I, I'm not doing any of that. Following what's in here is already hard enough. And I'm good with people just calling me, Brother Abraham, that's good enough for me. I told you I didn't want to take too long, so I better get out of here. <laughs> anyway, y'all keep us in prayer as we strive to continue to obey God. We love you. We miss you. And um, we're in Florida, so anytime anybody wants to come visit us, look on the church website, look at their locations, look at times. Come on and see us. We're there working faithfully, so Lord's willing, we'll, we'll see you again. That's a testimony. <laughs> well, we certainly thank God for Minister Abraham. We want you to continue to pray for him and his faithfulness. We're certainly grateful for what God has done for his family. And uh, certainly uh, God can do much more than we can ever imagine. Uh, it's just for us to put our faith in him. Is that right? I'm going to call upon one other brother. I'm going to ask him to be brief. Uh, Minister Rogers English from Atlanta, Georgia. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We greet everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus. Truly, we give honor to the Most High God. We thank God much for the prophets and apostles of old, for our present-day apostle, Geno Jennings. We truly thank God for him, for all the ministering brethren. We thank God for our bishops and elders, our evangelists, all the brothers and sisters. We truly thank God for you. I'm so grateful to be here once again. Remember our purpose of being here, brothers and sisters, is to worship God. Don't ever be ashamed to worship God. In our time of prayer, cry out unto God. Shout hallelujah anytime. Shout glory to God at any time. We all need God at the last day. 
Don't ever be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The word of God says, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes. Thank God for you. God bless you. God keep you. All right, we thank God for Brother English, as always. He also has been around for some time. Remember him in prayer always as he continues to labor in Atlanta, Georgia. We want just to remind you that you're listening to and watching. The Worldwide Truth of God radio and television program is coming to you from the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our international headquarters is located at 5105 North 5th Street. That's North 5th Street at Lindley Avenue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right here in the United States of America, where the Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings is our leader, teacher, guide, and he's our general overseer. This is also the combined celebration services of our 26th youth com convocation. It's our 33rd radio broadcast anniversary and our 24th telecast anniversary, and we're celebrating all those things all in one. Just like to also remind you that this program is on the air for your edification, that you may hear the word of God and turn away from the powers of the devil. The program is unscripted, unrehearsed, and it certainly is driven by the Holy Ghost. Here now is our leader, teacher, guide. He's the messenger, I tell you, of the Almighty God, the Apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. Angels. Heaven and earth, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. Extraordinary enemies. We bear witness there's only one true living God. He have no partners, he have no associates, he have no rivals. He is God alone that has no equals. We thank him for being the one true God of heaven and earth. He alone is the sender of holy prophets and of holy apostles. He came here and manifest himself in the flesh and allow that flesh to be a pattern of good works to teach us how to serve the spirit of the living God. He had ministers. They were apostles. God made, God taught. He taught them so well until when he died and came on back, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. God moved on them to write 
and left the message that he gave them on record for us. <clears throat> so nobody will have an excuse when the Lord comes. He left a pattern of good works, and I must say, it's a good pattern. <clears throat> it's a lot of good information that he left for us. And if we follow it, we'll be saved. To all of my viewing audience, we're coming to you live from Greensboro, North Carolina at our youth conference and broadcast anniversary service. Our international headquarters temple is 5105 North 5th Street. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where you're always welcome to stop in and let the word of God terrorize your soul. You know, God's word is a terror. Bible says, let him be your fear and let him be your dread. For he shall be a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. You know, some may not understand when I say, let the word of God be your terror. This bring you peace and terror. Sometimes it's good for the word of God to terrorize you, strike fear in you, move you out of your comfort zone, make you run to him, not just walk to him, but run to him. You know, there are many people God got in behind and made them run to him. One thing I learned about God, he'll make you do what you never thought you would do. So viewers, we are grateful. We are having a good time. It's so beautiful to see all these folk worshiping and singing what a mighty God we serve and then know what we're talking about. We don't have to go church hopping. Amen. My days of church hopping came to an end when God opened up my understanding. When he opened up my understanding, he placed me in a good place. And the best place where God can put you in is in God's word. There's soundness there. There's discipline there. There's a lot of good heavenly information that'll bring us nigh to him. Just like the word of God is designed to bring us closer to him, Satan is on the prowl to bring you or push you further and further away from him. To all of our ministers, we can never thank God enough for them that are present and to all the brothers and sisters that are watching Throughout America, that's not here in Canada, Australia and New Zealand and Korea, United Arab Emirates and the brothers and sisters and Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> you know, the word of God done dug them up too. You that is in the Asiatic world, to my brothers and sisters on the Fiji Islands and Samoan Islands and Crook Islands, the islands of the South Pacific near Japan, you that is in Hawaii. I can never thank God enough for living up to what he said. You know, God purposed that his word be preached to every creature that is under the heaven. That is God's purpose. It is not as well that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. In other words, it is not God's will for you to be lost. It is not God's will for anybody to go to hell, but that all come to repentance. 
Even though that is not his will, he know that everybody don't want to obey him. Viewers, many of you don't want to obey God. Hear me good now. Don't want to obey God, but yet you want to be saved. Do you see the confusion? Many of you don't want to obey God, yet you say you want to go to heaven. The Bible says obedience is better or greater or superior to sacrifice than an offering of the fat or ram. In the days of old, they had many offerings, bread offering, water offering, and kill a lamb and allow the blood to run down the altar. Cut the insides and consume the liver. Glory to God and consume the kidneys. Then they had to uh, light the entire lamb until there was nothing left but ashes. When there was nothing left but ashes, that means it was a complete death because there was nothing of the sacrifice left over. Now that fire that the priests used, God substitute that fire with himself. For he is that fire that come down from out of heaven, Holy Ghost, comforter, keeper, sin destroyer, life consumer. Are you listening? Just like the sacrifice had to be cut in each member of the internal organs had to be consumed when the sacrifice was consumed within and without. Here come the Holy Ghost. Putting our inner self in order that we may have a complete death inside and out. But before we can die, we must be cut. Glory to God. Before we can die, I believe you better give me the book of Samuel. Obedience. First Samuel chapter 16. Let me know when you're ready back there for Brother Williams. All right. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Yes. And we're going to start reading at verse 20. Follow me in your Bible, viewers, and you that are here. I want to take my time and soak you a little. That's right. We are a living sacrifice. That's right. In the Old Testament, they offered a dead sacrifice. The sacrifice wasn't offered until it died. That's right. Glory to God until it was put to death. Now the latter house declared he shall be greater than the former. That's right. The glory of it, the function of it, the appearance of it. In order for the glory of the latter house to be greater than the former, God had to institute something in the last days that would be superior to the church in the wilderness. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. The church in the wilderness had the law of Moses to govern them, discipline, guide them through the wilderness, a barren land, until they came to the land of Canaan, land that flowed with milk and honey. Christ! was in the wilderness with Israel. That's right. Hear me good. That's right. I didn't say the Son of God was with him. No. 
I said the spirit of Christ was with me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. That's what? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock they that followed them. They drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Christ was with Israel. That's right. Without flesh. That's right. Without blood. Without a mother. Without beginning. Without ending. And without relatives. That's right. That nature that I'm describing is spirit, divine, eternal, perpetual. That's right. Everlasting. Everlasting. Thou art God. Thou art God. So he guided Israel in the wilderness, and Canaan represent New Jerusalem. That's right. Moses represent Jesus, the Son of the Living God. So great until the Spirit of Christ moved on Moses on Musa to show the world the relationship between Moses and God. That's right. Until God moved on him to tell us, God shall raise up. For Moses truly said unto the glory fathers. Glory said God, glory said God. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 22. That's what? For Moses truly said unto Moses the fathers. Moses truly said to the father. A prophet. A prophet. Shall the Lord a, a prophet. prophet. Only one man can say that's him. That's right. Oh, you listen to the old man. That's right. It doesn't matter if God come along and send a man later. Nobody that come after Jesus walked earth can declare that prophecy. That's right. To be them but Jesus. That's right. Until the Bible says he was going to get one from among your brethren Brother. and he was not talking about the spiritual church. No. He was talking about the offspring or the seed of Abraham. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. Listen. For Moses truly said unto the Father. That what? A prophet. A prophet. One. One. Mm -hmm. Shall the Lord your God raise Shall the up Lord unto your you God raise up unto you of your brethren? He gonna be related to you, like unto me. Like me, he gonna be like me. That's right. That's right. How is he like you, Moses? When I came here, glory to God, Joshua said that the light in the room was like the light of the sun. That's right. In other words, the elements agree with his arrival. That's right. Jesus come here, they saw that star. Glory to God, and they followed it. That's right. When a proclamation was sent out to kill all the children, all the male children, here come a woman, take her son, put it in a basket and pitch it within and without to make it water resistant. And Moses was saved by water. By water. Are you getting what I'm telling That's you? That's right. He got his name from Pharaoh's daughter. God put his name in Pharaoh's daughter's mouth. He didn't know why she called him Moses. It was God's will, which meant I brought you out of the water. God brought him out what he was going to put him back in. God brought him out the water and was going to put him back in the water and then let the water separate by God's authority. That's right. Are you getting me? Amen. Aaron Rod Bud stood before glory to God, Pharaoh and Pharaoh was told by Moses, God, he wanted his people to get out of here. That's right. Pharaoh wasn't impressed because God didn't want Pharaoh to move quick. So God, not the devil, God 
harden his heart. That's right. Took the rod and threw it down, and the magicians were not impressed. Time to a serpent. The magicians come along and threw their rods down. And their rods turned to a serpent, but because the power of God was in the rod of Aaron, Aaron rod swallowed up all other rods. Which lets you know that God is a consumer of all evil. Doesn't matter how much evil it is, when God come in town, because the word of God said, when your God shall come, he consumes all other rods, he consumes all evil, he have power and authority over the serpent. <laughs> Moses fast 40 days and 40 nights, here comes Jesus fasting. 40 days and 40 nights because Moses said, God's going to raise up a prophet like me. Like and just like uh, the proclamation was sent out to kill all the male children, that's the way it was when Jesus arrived here. Right. Until the angel told Joseph, take the child and its mother and go to Egypt that the scripture might be fulfilled, a son shall rise out of Egypt. That's right. So when the sacrifices was offered in the days of old, one particular sacrifice, amongst others, pointed to the arrival of the greatest of all sacrifices. Let us remember, when they offered the lamb on an altar, the altar was a sacred place. The lamb didn't do no wrong, but the lamb had to be spotless. Flawless. In other words, it couldn't be lame, couldn't be crippled, couldn't be defiled, couldn't be blind. So nobody could offer themselves no prophet because all the prophets was tainted. It ain't a prophet that walked the earth other than Jesus that wasn't tainted. Elijah was good, but he was tainted. I want to say, but Enoch had a testimony that pleased God. That's right, but Enoch was tainted. That's right. He had a testimony that pleased God that by faith. I want to say, but you mean to tell me he had sinned? Yes. Where did he get it from? His father. Who was he? Adam. Adam. Mind his testimony, please God, glory to God, he still was tainted. was tainted. Elijah was caught up, hallelujah, in the whirlwind. But even Elijah was tainted. That's right. Why? The shedding of blood held everything up. That's right. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. No remission of sins. Rivers of blood ran down all over the place. That's right. But even the animal itself. Blood was tainted. tainted. When the Bible says not having a spot within the animal or wasn't lame, that means it had to be healthy in good shape. That's right. But the blood of Adam tainted creation. That's right. Are you getting me? Amen. What did the prophet say there in the book of Samuel? First Samuel 15 and we're at verse 20. That's what? And Saul said unto Samuel. Saul said to Samuel. Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I obey God. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Yeah. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Yeah. But the people took up the spoil. The people took up the spoil. Sheep and oxen and chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. Yes. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And I've Verse 22. All right. And Samuel said, What did the prophet say? Hath the Lord as great delight? Do the Lord have great pleasure in burnt offerings and sacrifices? And burnt offerings and sacrifices. As in obeying the as voice of in the Lord? obeying him. Behold, to obey is better than Hold sacrifice. It. That's it. Let me use another word. To cooperate. It's better than sacrifice. 
than sacrifice to agree with the Lord. It's better than sacrifice. Than sacrifice to submit to the Lord. That's right. It's better. Better than sacrifice. Than sacrifice. Then what? And to hearken. And to listen. Than the fat of ram. Than the fat of ram. For rebellion. I want you to hear this. Amen. Viewers, I want you to hear this good. First Samuel 15 and verse 23. Rebellion is rejecting, out. rejecting, fighting. Hard-headedness, right. stubbornness, That's right. rebellion is as is compared is as is compared the sin of witchcraft to witchcraft. And Hold it. Rebellion. Rebellion is as as the sin of the witchcraft. sin of witchcraft. Rebellion, stubbornness, hard-headedness is compared to sorcery. That's right. What do rebellion and witchcraft have in common? It is the working of an evil spirit. That's right. It is the working of an evil spirit, of an ungodly spirit. Witchcraft, witchcraft. Sorcery, sorcery, the indulgence of dark magic. That's right. The indulgence in the works of Satan, because you have the intelligence of Satan, because you are loyal to Satan, because you are hired by Satan, and because you submit to Satan's will. That's right. That's right. There are three wills in the earth. That's right. First will, God. Second will, Satan. Third will, man. So when God made man on earth, he put his will there and said that his will should be in earth as it is in heaven. And when his will was violated in heaven, it was put out. Right. When another wheel came in heaven, glory to God, it was thrown out. Oh, no. He didn't converse with it. He didn't argue with it. He didn't even hold a meeting about it. That's right. That's right. Glory to God, but he put Satan's will out. That's right. The Apostle John, the brother of James, the son of Zebedee, saw the will of Satan. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Coming out of heaven. That's right. And he saw the effects of it in here on earth. Revelation, chapter 12, we're at verse 9. Follow me and get me. And the great dragon was cast out. That oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, man. <laughs> what was cast out? That great dragon. Not just a dragon. No, great dragon. All right, let's go to school. Amen. Satan is a dragon. Yes. The Bible is describing his character. That's right. A dragon is a carnivore. One that consumes eat flesh. A dragon, vicious. A dragon was not designed to be a pet. That's right. That's right. So here you had Satan's character, beast, evil, rebellious, confrontational. That's right. Brings destruction and brings confusion. Listen. And the great dragon was cast out. The great spirit of confusion. Mm. The great spirit of confrontation. That's right. The great dragon was cast out. Put out. That old serpent. What is he called? That old serpent. Notice he's not just called the serpent. No. But it's a title in front of his character. That old serpent. Old means he's the experienced deceiver. That's right. 
He's a master of deception. And he's a master in consuming. Oh, yes. For a serpent, when he coil around its prey, he never start to digest at feet. The first thing he starts to digest is the head right. of all his prey. This is why the word of God says, let this mind be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus, because the first thing that Satan attack, attack is your mind. That's right. Whenever a serpent coil around any animal, the objective is to suffocate it, to get rid of its momentum. And that's why many of you here have a problem with your mind is because Satan has coiled himself. That's right. He has coiled himself in your thought process. That's right. And whenever the serpent coils itself around any animal, what is it doing? Choking it. Yeah. And the animal's body responds, it don't want to die. So what does it do? Fight. Yeah. Kick. Fight. Kick. Until the serpent overtake him. That's right. Satan has coiled himself in the minds of the world, That's right. including many church folk. That's right. Have you ever found thoughts in your mind that were not yours? That's right. Talk back to me. Have you not heard statements in your mind being made against God that you would never make? That's right. Did it pound your mind so bad until you thought you blasphemed? That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Two characters is in the dome of our temple. That's right. Satan is there as a dragon to viciously attack your spiritual mind. And Satan is there as a serpent to coil himself around your thoughts to suffocate your willingness to think about God. That's wonderful. How can God deliver me if I can't think on him? Wonderful. wonderful. If the book says, let, let this, this mind be in you. Be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. That was also in Christ Jesus. If I'm in a state of confusion, I'm, I try to pray like the animal that's kicking. Yes. So I try to pray. And then you feel like you're praying going nowhere. Yeah. What are you doing? You're kicking. Oh, yes. You're fighting. Yes. You're making a attempt to fast. Yes. And you can't even go as long as you used to. What? Satan. Satan. Coiled himself. That's right. He wrapped himself around your mind so tight until now the heart is altered. That's right. You know when a snake wrapped around any animal, the mind, the head, blood build up. Yeah. And because of the pressure of the body of the snake, he alters the rhythm of the heart of the animal. Because of the pressure that Satan put in your mind, he alters the rhythm of your love. That's right. Until the love you have for God become affected. That's right. What is his objective? To choke God out of the church. That's right. How does he choke God out of you to make you disbelieve him? Yeah. How 
How can I serve a God that I don't believe? That's right. God says, he that come to me must believe. Glory, hallelujah, glory must to believe. God. Must, must believe that he is. Believe. Must believe. That he is a rewarder to them that diligently. diligently. It goes back to a particular way how to seek him. That's right. He said diligently. diligently. You find that rat or possum when the snake is wrapped around him, he's diligently, diligently. fighting, That's right. trying to get loose. So when Satan coil himself around your mind, the next thing that's going to be affected is your heart. It's your heart. And just like naturally the rhythm of the heart change and beat, Satan can wrap around your mind so tight that the emotions of your heart change towards God. That's right. That's right. I want to take my time and soak you a little. Revelation 12 and verse 9. Says what? And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the... That experienced deceiver. Yes. That old serpent, that experienced deceiver, that experienced liar, that experienced tricker, that experienced wicked one. Wicked one. Mm -hmm. Called the devil. Called the devil. The devil. And Satan. Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. How much of the world he got? The whole world. Whole world. Nobody is spared. That's right. You cannot pray, you cannot fast, you cannot contend earnestly for the faith that's once delivered unto the saints without the mind of God. That's right. Nobody. Nobody. If I lose my spiritual mind, then I start to drift away. So then with the mind, do you hear this? In Romans chapter 7 and verse 25. What is it? So then with the mind, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. With the mind. With the mind, I, I give God service. That's right. That's right. That's why your whole mind, you know, that's why God, he wants you to get rid of your mind. That's right. Your mind gets you in trouble. Your mind keeps you in trouble. Your mind keeps you out of church. Yes, it will. Your mind calls you not to be in church when you're in church. That's right. Do you hear what the word of God says? So then with the mind. Give chapter and verse again. Romans chapter 7 and verse 25. So then. With the mind. With the mind. I myself serve the law of God. Mm. In order for me to give the law of God service, service. I got to have one mind. one mind. Because if I'm double-minded, I won't give God the service because I'm too unstable. That's right. A double-minded man is unstable oh, in all, all his ways. All his ways. So look at your mind. Let it go. Let it go. I believe one scripture says, get rid of your mortal mind. That's right. Let your mind go. Let go from the mortal thought. Do you hear? In the book of 2 Esther, chapter 14 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Let go from the mortal thought. Let go from the Amen. carnal mind. Cast away the mortal burdens of man. It's carnal mind. That's right. Cast away the burdens of man. The burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Mm. Weak nature. Where well, you got a weak nature. Weak nature. This flesh is a weak nature. A weak nature. And if my mind is not one with God, yeah. it continues to weaken my nature. That's right. That's right. What I would stood up against can't stand no more. That's true. Why? My mind is too weak <laughs> and I can't resist. That's right. That's right. Can't fast like I should. Why? My mind Nine. is too weak. That's right. Or that God can't fast like I should. That's right. 
What do Satan use to choke a brother or sister? Your past? Are oh, you listening to me? Wonderful teaching. Your past. That's right. Go ahead. Man. Many of you still fighting with your past. That's right. Even though many have repented. Yeah. But Satan bring the past and make it present. You go before God in repentance, and then you plead and say, well, I don't know whether God forgave me. Right. Did God forgive me? That's right. That mind becomes so weak. Weak. That's right. So weak. That's so fragile. Yeah. Lord, take God so frail. Put off now the weak nature. Put it off. That's right. That's right. That's why the apostle said, let this mind be in you that saw so in Christ Jesus. Notice the first word. Let. In the book of Philippians, let. Philippians That means volunteer God's mind, welcome it. That's right. That's right. Notice the language of scripture. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says what? Let. Hold it. That's right. Let. Let. Allow it. Welcome it. Embrace it. Don't shun it. That's right. Don't reject it. That's right. Don't push it off. Let. Let. Let this mind. Let be. what? This mind. What? This mind. There's another mind mm -hmm. coming. That's right. This mind. There's another mind coming. That's right. Your mind got you in sin. Your mind keep you in sin. Oh, yes. Your mind get you in trouble. Your mind keep you in trouble. That's right. That's right. God don't trust the mind of no man. No man. And no woman. Oh no. That's why he made a recommendation here. Let this mind be Let in it. you. Let. Viewers, you out there, you need God's mind. That's it. Go ahead and take God. When you have God's mind, that mind of God won't fight God's word. That's right. Eh? That's right. What did he say? Let this mind be Let in you. This mind being you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm. Jesus Christ had the mind of God. That's right. The flesh had the mind of the spirit. That's right. The mind of the spirit governed his body, and the body was an example for the church, showing us that God's mind, God's intelligence, God's thinking is to rule and run his church because it's his body. That's right. Where do we get God's mind from? From the letter. That's right. And the letter is designed to kill the mind of man. Are you getting what I'm telling you? In order for a sacrifice to be offered right, your mind got to change. It ain't no one changing until the mind changes. No. I don't care how much jumping and shouting That's and true. praying and fasting. Though it take God until the mind change, it ain't nobody changing. Let go from the mortal thoughts. When a person make it up in their mind to take a bath and change their clothes, if they if they don't if their mind don't change, they are gonna keep being dirty and stinking and filthy. <laughs> That's right. Eh? That's right. When they make it up in their mind to make a change. You can talk what you want to talk. You can claim God know my heart and all that stuff, but when you ain't nothing gonna happen. That's right. Until your mind changes. That's right. Conversion. That's it. He told the apostle Peter, when thou art truly, truly converted. converted, truly changed, then you can strengthen your brother. You strengthen your brother. True conversion, true change starts here. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? True conversion, true change start with the destruction of the old mind. That's right. Your mind must be gut out. 
That's right. Eh? That's right. You better give me the first chapter, first chapter Jeremiah, of Jeremiah, son. Glory to God. Amen. 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 You know, I work in property, and you got the gut things out. <laughs> That's right. Glory to God. I, I'm bringing you some good Holy Ghost demolition today. God wants some new prime real estate to bring to him. That's but right. But before he bring up that property, he, he, we got to first be good out. Good out. <laughs> torn down. Amen. Do you hear this? Jeremiah chapter 1 and at verse 10. That's what? See, I have this day. See, I have this day. Set thee over the nation. Over the nation. And over the kingdom. To do what? To root out. You got to come to church to get rooted. Rooted. Root out. You got to get rooted out. You know, when you want that plant to die, just stop cutting at the top and go to the roots. That's it. Pull the whole thing up. That's right. Everything in us that's not like God, let the word of God pull the whole thing up. Amen. Uh -huh. And to pull down. Pull down. That that's which it. rejects the counsel of God, pull it down. Pull it down. Mm -hmm. And to destroy. Destroy it. And to throw, throw down. down. To build. Wait a minute now. After all that is done, after the destruction is done, what follows? To build and to plant. Your mind must be thrown down, destroyed, and yeah. now God wants to build something there. To build. That's why many people are lost. Come to church, come to church for years, That's and right. never get it together. That's right. Never get it together spiritually. Mm -hmm. Never get it together spiritually. Why? Right. The mind is not there yet. That's it. They go through the motions of getting on their knees. Yeah. And that gang got prayer in mind, it gets down there because everybody else is down there. That's right. Mind is not there yet. That's right. Go to church on church night, but not there when they get there. Why? That's right. Mind is not there yet. So then with the mind. Do you hear it? Back in Romans 7 and verse 25. So then. With the mind. I myself serve the law of God. That's why many of you don't have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Your mind is not linked to heaven yet. That's right. Your mind must get linked. Over to God on the, that's what it is written. They was with one accord. One accord. In one place. That's right. Now hold it. One place. It's not just narrowed down being in the same room. No. Don't ever look at one place as just being in the same room. Right. When you are in one place, you could be in five different rooms, and yet everybody is in one place. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. But when the mind and the heart is unified with the mind and the heart of God, then you become in one place. One place. That's truly being on one accord. That's it. When my mind agree with the word and my heart agree with the word, it causes my body to react out what I agree to. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's it. Are you listening? I thank God. I thank God. Through Jesus Christ our Through Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind. With the mind. I myself serve the law of God. So how is your mind? How is it? How is it? Are you trying to decide whether to stay in church or go out? Yeah. Are you on the verge of backsliding? That's right. Why the serpent? Or it take God is calling around yeah. your mind. That's right. Do you find yourself anointing your head to fast? Change your mind. Anoint your head another day? Change your mind. Don't you hear it another day? Change your mind. What? Satan is doing everything in his power to rob you of participating in your obedience to God. That's right. That's right. Are you too close to a sinner? Mm. That the sinner have influenced your mind until his actions and his thoughts have contaminated your loyalty. That's right. Until you're scared to give him up or her up, but you're not scared to give God up. Right. How is your mind? How is your mind? Who have it? Who have it? Where is it? 
That's right. What's possessing it? Yeah. How long did they have it? That's right. What are they doing with it? What location is it in? That's What's right. left of it? How much of it do you have? How much been taken? Mm. What been taken? What's being done with it? And what's been taken? Where is it? Where is it? And after they took it, you don't know where it's at, how much is left in you. That's true. And whatever's left in you, how much of that God belongs? It belongs to God. That's right. Go ahead, man. Who have your mind? Who have? Who have? What have your mind? Are you listening? Let go from the mortal thoughts. Turn it loose. Back in 2nd Esther 14 and verse 14. Glory to God. What did he say, son? Let go from the mortal thoughts. Let go from the, the carnal mind. Cast away the burdens of man. Do what? Cast away the burdens of man. You know, Brother Minister Gary, by God's permission, preached an excellent message last night. But nobody and received the Holy Ghost until their mind stayed on Jesus. That's right. That mind is what brings heaven close to you. Closer. And that mind can bring the devil close to you. That's right. Choose you this day. Whom you going to serve? Yes, How sound is your mind? Yeah. Are you skipping and going to false churches through the week? Right. That's right. That's right. Holy Ghost said, double-minded man. A double-minded man is unstable. Hear, 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 hear this. In St. James chapter 1 and verse 8. Listen. A double-minded man. A double-minded man. A unstable man. Is unstable. How much? In all his ways. All his ways. Are you so close to someone in church, they done coerce you to go false church shopping with them? Yeah. False church shop. That's right. Whatever service night we don't have no church, you go false church shop. That's right. And then they tell you it's all right. It's all. Yes, they will. Even though the words say come out from among them, your mind said go among them. Go among them. Why? My friends is there. My family is there. And the Bible says come out, but your yeah. mind said go in. That's right. Double minded. Double minded. Are you listening? A double-minded man. God is a God of one mind. That's right. And in order to give God service, his church got to have his mind, which is one. One. You got one mind, you'll see one God. Double-minded, you got to see more than one. <laughs> That's right. Are you listening? That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? A double-minded man. A double-minded man. Is unstable. In how much? In all his ways. That's why in church, out of church, believe, don't believe. Don't believe. Double-minded. 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 Jumping and shouting and running all over the place, and then when they sit down, they hear something they don't believe. That's true. That's true. The Bible says no man can serve two masters. That's right. You're going to hate one and love the, other. love the other. When you sit in church with the carnal mind, you hear the word of God you are receiving in of a spiritual mind. That's right. And the spiritual mind of God that comes through the form of scripture come to battle, fight, destroy, cast out the carnal mind. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. What? Because in Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. The carnal mind is enmity. Is at odds. Against God. It's a conflict between you and God. That's right. What's the problem? It is for it is not subject. It's not subject. To the law of it God. It won't submit and then what? Neither, Neither indeed can be. Indeed can be. So then they that yeah. are in the flesh. That's why your stubbornness lasts. 
So long. So long. That's right. Your unbelief in scriptures lasts so long. That's right. Carnal, carnal mind. You try to approach the Bible with logic. Yeah. You try to approach the Bible with your carnal thoughts. That's right. Fail to realize the book is a book of mystery. That's right. Can't read the Bible like a little storybook. No. There's two mysteries in the book. Yeah. Not one. Yeah. It's two mysteries. Two forms of mysteries in the book. Great is the mystery of godliness and the mystery of iniquity. Of iniquity. Are you listening? In 2 Thessalonians chapter Glory 2 and verse God. 7. Great is the mystery of godliness and the mystery of iniquity. That's right. Let you know there's a mystery tied to both spirits. That's right. Are you getting me, Williams? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's a mystery tied to both spirits. Both spirits. And both spirits have the titles of beasts. I say both spirits, I said, have the title of beast. Oh. The voice of God is heard like a roaring lion. Roaring lion. Satan said, I walk as a roaring lion. That's right. Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Eh? Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Go ahead. One lion is against the other. Go ahead. One lion got more of a biting force than the other. Go ahead. Take God. Go ahead. Eh? One lion is king of the universe. Mm -hmm. The other lion, this is his domain. That's right. Are you getting the old man? Listen. James 1 and verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable. Examine yourself tonight. Yeah. If you got a double mind, double when mind. it's time to take your Lord's Supper, you double-minded, get away from the table. Get away. Get away. Double-minded, don't even wash feet. Mm. Something in that Bible you don't believe that God says you got to obey, don't even get on the choir. That's right. That's right. Something in that Bible you don't believe that God said you got to obey, don't even sing a solo. Amen. Go ahead. Something in that Bible you don't believe that God said, don't even give a testimony. That's right. That's right. Something in that Bible you don't believe, how can you pray to how a God you? you don't believe in? That's right. Someone said, but I believe in God. That's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. How can you believe in God and disbelieve his word? That's God right. said he's, he's the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if I don't believe the word, I don't believe God. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Why are you listening? A double-minded man is anything in the scriptures. Amen. You don't understand. Never fight it. Never fight it. Doesn't matter how hard it is. Doesn't matter how it make you feel. That's right. Don't never fight it. That's right. Don't ever even say it's not true. Don't ever say, it can't be can't this be. way. Don't ever say, I can't see it like that. It ain't for you to see it no type of way. That's right. Let God be your eyes. And let God be your understanding. That's it. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wonderful. Let God. Hallelujah. He said, consider what I said. Consider what I said. That's right. I never heard that before. I don't make it, that don't mean it's not true. No. Glory to God, the days of Noah, they never heard it was going to rain before. But it still was true. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. What did he say? A double-minded man. Look at your mind. Amen. 
Are you trying to decide whether to stay in church or out? Are you weighed in the balance yeah. and found wanting? Yeah. What is your want? Do you want him more than you want God? That's right. That he can make you miss church? That's right. Do you want her more than you want God? Yeah. That he or she can get you off your knees from time for the Holy Ghost? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of the Listen city. at the prophet Hosea. In Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 2. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, beg your pardon. 14. Uh -huh. Multitudes. How much? Multitudes. How much? Multitudes. A whole lot of folk. Where are they, William? In the valley of decision. That's right. You're in the valley. Of decision. Of decision. Of decision. But, but what's still happening? For the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is still close. In the valley of decision. While you trying to make up your mind what to do. That's right. That's right. Multitudes. 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 What if God didn't say how many? Glory to God. Glory to God. And just say multitudes. Multitudes. Amen. I don't want to be in that multitude. Not in that. No way. Are you trying to decide? Amen. Do you get around your friends at the job, sister, and wear pants and then come to church? With a dress. You got two different wardrobes. That's right. That's right. Amen. Brother, do you got two different wardrobes? Yeah. Well, what you wear out there, you would never wear to church. That's right. Double minded. Double minded. Amen. God says he's coming as a thief. No thief warn you before his arrival. No. Thief don't care where you are. You can be in the bathroom, on the toilet, in the tub. When a thief comes, you just know they're there. That's it. Thief don't knock on the bathroom. Yeah. I, I, I just want you to know I'm in here burglarizing your house. That's right. All right, I'll be out. I'll, I'll be out. <laughs> thief don't do that. No. When your mind is sound, and I want you to hear me good, yeah. nothing and nobody can pull you away from God. That's right. Nobody. When your mind is sound, coming to church is good because God orders it. That's right. But the church has to be in you. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. You have to be loyal oh, yes. to God's church. Oh, yes. My mind has to be in here. That's it. My heart got to be in here. For the Bible says that the body is not one member, but many. many. All the members of my physical body got to be in here. That's right. All of it. Not sneak. That's not sneak to the club through the week. That's right. Not go play an instrument in a false stretch and in truth. That's double-minded. Double-minded. That's playing for the devil and trying to serve God. That's right. Get me? A double-minded man. Is unstable in all his ways. All these musicians that we have, brother, that, bra that, that brass band, I felt it all down in my soul. Amen. That's, that's, that's the sound that I was looking for. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I, I can hear the difference in the sound. The sounds. My ear tried the words. Amen. Amen. I, I, I heard the sound. Glory to God, my feet was patting, my heels was patting, my hand was clapping, my head was shaking. Before I know it, I concluded i just do this. <laughs> <laughs> when you're double-minded, double -minded. a false religion will pay you for your talent. That's right. But when you're loyal to God, 
you have passed up that money. That's right. I cannot play for the devil and God. And God. No man can serve two, two masters. Two masters. No man. Here yeah, the Bible gives women preachers and I'm an organ player and because they offer me an X amount of money a week, I'm going to get on the organ to back up Mother Mabel. <laughs> Amen. I'm a good tar player, so they offer me $5,000 if I play for someone up singing a solo, talking about holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, blessed Trinity. Yeah. My love for money going to challenge my eternal life. That's right. How strong is your mind and how weak is it? Amen. What is it in your life that you are afraid to lose that's greater than God? That's right. When you are attached to God, Mind, soul, body, spirit. And spirit. I say attached. attached. Mind, soul, body, and spirit. and spirit. I mean the spirit of God possess your soul. That's right. You are possessed by him. That's right. What you mean? Totally taken over. Totally. And the very God of peace. Listen. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23. The very God of peace. Sanctify you wholly. Set you apart wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit. How much? Your whole spirit. How much? Your whole spirit. How much is your spirit? Your whole spirit. And now, all we're here about to read come under whole or all of it. All of it. Whole, all of it. That's I right. pray God your, your whole spirit. I pray God all of your spirit and soul, all of your soul, and body, all of your body, be preserved blameless, be preserved, that's it, blameless, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to Jesus Christ, that's right, that's right, if your mind is weak, you're weak, and if your mind is weak, fast and pray that God strengthen the mind, that's right, In the book of 1 Thessalonians Sometimes your surroundings yeah. is what affect the strength of your mind. That's right. That's right. The friends you associate with, the company that you keep, company. and some of them are church people. That's true. That's true. No brother that minister should be so close to a false prophet that he know mm -hmm. until the false prophet got influence on him. And then he bring that damnable stuff in check. That's right. The only voice that should come out of God house is God. It's God. Are you listening? That's right. Listen at this. Now in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 14. Says what? Now we exhort you, brethren. I want to exhort you tonight. Warn them. What? Warn them. Amen. Warn them. We got all these folk in here. There's over 2,000 people in here. <laughs> Amen. I'm warning you. I'm warning them. Because if the Lord came tonight, how many up to 2,000 would be ready? Mm. There's over 2,000 people in here tonight. Tonight. If the Lord came tonight, how many still will be seated when he appear up in the heaven? That's right. Including the pulpit. That's right. That's right. That's right. Ask God to help your mind. Amen. Ask God to get rid of your mind. Your mind. Your mind will make you out of a liar. That's right. Your mind will make you hate your brother. Yeah. And falsely accuse your sister. That's right. Your mind will make you distant from each other. Yeah. God mind will make you one. 
That's right. I believe Jesus prayed concerning his apostles that they all might be one. Might be one. I pray for them which you gave me out of the world. And he prayed that they all might be one. That's right. And when they were one, they all had the same thing, preached the same thing, thing. practiced the same thing, and didn't differ. That's right. Eh? That's right. Do you hear what he says? In St. John chapter 17 and verse 8. What is it? For I have given them the words which thou gavest me. (laughs) Amen. You see, the flesh got its information from the spirit. It ain't two gods there. He said, I gave them the word that thou gave me. In other words, the spirit made the thing known to the body because the body represents the church and that lets you know in order for the church to give the information, the spirit got to bring it. That's it. That's why how can you hear without a preacher and how can he preach except it be sent and take the spirit to send him and then put him in the word and then make himself known to the preacher so the preacher can make it known to the church. That's it. That's it, brother. Pastor Paul said, I delivered unto you first of all. Thank God that which I also received. That's right. And For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. I gave them the word. Not even the Son of God deviated from what the Holy Ghost said. That's right. Huh? And they have received them. What? And they have received them. They didn't mean. say they understood them. No. Someone not say, well, how can you receive what they didn't understand? They considered what was said. What was said. And God gave them the understanding later. When did he do it? After the resurrection. After, that's then right. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That's right. Mm-hmm. And have known surely that I came out from thee. And? And they have believed that thou didst send me. They believe. They believe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostles believe. That's right. That Jesus, the Son of God, was sent. That's by it. the Father or the flesh was sent by the Spirit. I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Many of you watching me now, I know what you're about to comment. Pastor Jenny, you preach Jesus Christ as God. So was God praying to himself? No. No. The flesh was praying to the, the Spirit, Spirit because the flesh is the body and the body represents the church and the churches of Christ. That's right. Showing us what nature we're supposed to pray to. That's we right. don't pray to the body that Mary birthed. We pray to the spirit that made the body. That's right. Yeah? That's right. At no time that the apostles pray to the flesh. No. The apostles pray to the spirit. To the spirit. Not even the flesh pray to itself. That's right. The flesh pray to, to the, the spirit, spirit that was not only in heaven, but was in the flesh and in earth and in hell. That's right. The spirit Hallelujah. is everywhere. Hallelujah. We will take God, he's higher than heaven. Higher than heaven. Deeper than hell. Broader than the sea. That's right. Thanks be unto God and longer than the earth. That's right. The Spirit of God is everywhere. I pray for them. He came and left us an example that we should follow us his steps. Let you know how to pray. How to pray. And what nature to pray to. That's it. They didn't pray to the human, they prayed to the divine. That's right. Go ahead. Eh? I pray for I them. I pray to them. I, I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I don't pray for the world. But for them which thou but hast for given me. them that you gave me. For they are thine. They are what? For they are thine. They belong to the Spirit. Now in St. John 17 at verse 20. Eh? Neither pray I for these alone. I'm not only praying for the apostles only. But for them also which shall believe on me. I'm, I, I'm praying for all believers. Through their word. That believe on me through their word. That they all may be one. What? That they all may be one one. That's it. That prayer is not just for the apostles. That's right. That prayer is for all believers. That's right. Don't you hear what he said? Neither pray I for these alone. Somebody say, well, Pastor Jennings, I'm a believer. If you're a believer, that's bigger than just having faith in God. Amen. Faith in God for healing, faith in God for deliverance, faith in God for raising the dead, faith in God for giving you a job. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, all right. Oh, that's good. All All right. But you got to believe the letter. That's it. Because the letter is the expressions of God. That's right. And you got to believe all the content. That's he it. that believeth on me as. As. 
the scripture has said, if that happened, something might happen to you. That's right. That's right. That's what make one go pray and seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost. That's it. They believe on him as the scripture has said, when that happened, something started working in the belly. Hallelujah. 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 Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. Faith hallelujah. makes me fall on my knees. That's right. Hallelujah. My mind calls me to meditate That's right. day, and night day and night on the things of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Makes me fall on my knees. Hallelujah. Cry out to him. That's right. Make something. Hallelujah. Something start moving in me. He that believeth on Jesus me. Jesus said, he that believeth on me. As the scripture had according said. According to what the word says about him. Out of his belly. Out. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Out of his belly. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Out of his belly shall flow rivers. Shall flow the spirit. Most folk overlook that. Give me the woman at the well quickly. Amen. And whole flow rivers. Amen. Out of his belly shall flow, shall rivers, flow rivers of living Out water. of his belly shall move, the spirit will move. The rivers is not natural water, it's the spirit of God. Hallelujah. He was at the well with the woman. St. John chapter 4. And at verse 10. And said what? Jesus answered and said unto her. Jesus answered and said to her. If thou knewest the gift of God. Uh -huh. If you who, knew God gift. And who it is that said to thee, give me to drink. Yes. Thou wouldest have asked of him. Uh -huh. And he would have given thee living water. He would give you living water. The woman said unto For him. For this spake he of, of the, the spirit. spirit. Of the spirit. Bible says this spake he of the the Spirit. Back in St. John 7 and verse 39. Says what? But this spake he of the Spirit. This spake he of the Spirit. Which they that believe on him should they receive. Which that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost. The living water is what? The Holy Ghost. The living water is what? The Holy Ghost. The Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look how the Bible on the day of Pentecost described the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. There's two words that I want you to notice. The Holy Ghost bears the title water and bears the title fire. The Holy Ghost is called living water. Living water. And John said, one come after me that's mightier than I shall baptize with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. fire. Naturally, water put out fire. That's right. But when you talk about the Holy Ghost, water is fire. Is fire. When the Bible points to the Holy Ghost as water and the Holy Ghost as fire, fire. it's pointing two functions of the one God. That's right. Let me show you what he does as water. Acts chapter 2, begin at verse 1. Acts 2 and verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, yes. they were all with one accord in one place. Then what? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And what happened? And it filled. What? It filled. That's what water does. It filled. It filled. All the house where they were sitting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Holy Ghost is called living water, water. and filled. Filled all the house where they were sitting. Hallelujah. Then what? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire. Like what? Like as a fire. Then what? And it set upon each of them. Now, the function of the Holy Ghost filled, they was filled with the living water. Filled. 
but then the fire began to burn. That's right. Not naturally burn, but spiritually make the body move That's and right. respond to the power of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can a man take fire into his bosom and not be burnt? That's right. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost bear the title fire, fire and water. And water. Fire, he come to burn, consume. That's right. Water, he come to fill you up. That's right. Hallelujah. Both elements make you move. Oh, yeah. One make you move quicker than the other. Water can push you. But a fire gets you to move quicker. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be God, blessed be God. Hallelujah. You see what I'm talking about? Go ahead, brother. What did he say? And they were all filled. They were all filled. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. They were all filled. Go ahead, hallelujah. Go ahead, take God. Go ahead, take God. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. Mm. And the Spirit, hallelujah, gave utterance. Gave them utterance. Mm. You take any fire that burns wood. If the fire go out, mm -hmm. you still know that fire was there. Just come past that wood and you can hear some noise. That's right. Crackling. That's, yeah, right. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. You can hear some crackling. crackling. Proof that fire was there. That's right. That's why the Spirit of God fills. Fills. It's as rivers of living water, it fills. Fills. It rise. That's right. And keep traveling. That's right. And keep traveling. Until they get to your mouth. That's right. Then the fire start walking with your tongue. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And start changing language. Go ahead, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get going, hallelujah. Yeah. Go ahead. It start working. Go ahead. With your tongue. And then change your language. Go ahead. Hallelujah. That's what you're praying for. That's it. That's what you're tarrying for. That's it. So the water can come. That's it. Trouble the water. Trouble. Go ahead, hallelujah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, take God. Go ahead, brother. It troubles the water. Hallelujah. Start building up in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have still water. Hallelujah. And you have living water. Living water. You take a pot, put it on the stove, and no flame, still water. Still water. If you want that water to become trouble, turn the flame on. That's it. Get some heat under it. That's Go it. Ahead, hallelujah. Huh? That's right. God want a church where the water is troubled. Go ahead. He don't want no still church. He want a church where the water is troubled. Ask God. Hey. Touch the water. Trouble your water. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Ask God. Trouble your water. Ask God. Move in your heart. Stand that spirit down in your soul. Hallelujah. Let God know you don't want to be still. You want that spirit to be troubled. That's right. Let the heat of the Holy Ghost burn in you until your tongue start talking. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And they were all filled. They all they were filled. Were filled with the Glory Holy Ghost. God. With the Holy Ghost. And began to speak. That water built up. That's right. Living water. That's right. Then they had to burst out the mouth. And began to speak with other tongues. Are you listening? As Hallelujah. the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ask God 
They give you one mind. One. Let the Holy Ghost take over your mind. Ask God to give you his mind, his character, his heart, his way of thinking. Hallelujah. Hey. That's right. Ask God to do it. Do it, say God. Give me your mind. Give me your heart. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Ask God to give it to you. God to do it. He says, knock, and it shall be open. To everyone that asks, receive it. And to him that knock, it shall be open. Hallelujah. If you want the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, ask the Lord give you that mind. That mind. Hallelujah. And you can tell when that mind starting to form. That's right. You find yourself coming more and more. Hallelujah. That's right. Getting on your knees, talking to God. Go ahead. My mind is getting better. More and more, I want to be in church. More and more, I want God. What? My mind. Go ahead, hallelujah. Yes! My mind. That's it. Starting to change. That's right. Hallelujah. So then what? With that mind to change. Go ahead. Your old mind keep you with old habits. The old mind Keep you in that Adamic nature. That's God creating you. A new mind. New mind. Hallelujah. And a new heart. Hallelujah. That's right. And a new heart. That's it. That's God to do it. God to do it. Just like that animal kick and fight. Hallelujah. When the serpent wraps around it, you got the kick. Fight, fast, pray, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. That's it. Where unto thou art also called. That's it. Satan is calling around many of you. But Satan can be broken. Oh, yes. Yeah. Satan can be broken. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. God rules Satan. You want Satan to be broken? Talk to his boss. That's right. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. You want Satan? Hallelujah. To be broken? Talk to his boss. Hallelujah. The Bible said, should we not rather be subject to the father of spirits and live? Hallelujah. You want Satan to be broken? Talk to his boss. He said, I create good and evil. And evil. God is his boss. That's right. Put his boss on him. That's right. Talk to his boss. Let him know how much the devil is bothering you. The boss said, get this behind me. Oh, I take off. Hallelujah. Get this behind me. Go ahead, man. Hey. Go ahead. Get this behind me. The boss don't want Satan to walk next to him. No. Get behind it. Behind it. In other words, you can't do no more than what I said. That's right. When I said. How I said. That's right. Now take this under consideration. God can give the devil charge to attack you, challenge your testimony, 
challenge your faith. Challenge your sincerity. But God is Satan's boss. He made him and he can break him. Are you listening? Amen. Hallelujah. He made him. He can break him. The devil was not made for you to be afraid of him. The only one we're supposed to fear is God. God. That's right. Satan lingers with you as long as God let him. And God will give him permission. Why? It makes you break. You ain't praying. You ain't fasting. And Satan is exhausting you. Making you tired. That's right. You see how wise God is? So then, you're starting to go down. Yeah. And the devil see it. Devil don't want to go. Because now you're going to talk to his boss. That's right. Are you listening? Wonderful, brother. Wonderful. Don't believe everything the devil bring you. That's right. Don't even think about everything the devil bring you. That's right. Because it's nothing more than a distraction. Amen. They keep you off guard and they keep you spiritually dysfunctional. That's it. He's a God that's a deliverer. Hallelujah. Stop dwelling on your past. Hallelujah. Stop feeling as though you got to prove to people you're trying to make a change. That's between you and God. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Ask God to give you that one mind. One mind. And when you have that one mind, you will seek God for the Holy Ghost. Wonderful. Out of all your years of fumbling and toiling and everything, with that mind you got to serve. Serve the Lord. The Lord. That's it. Holy Ghost brought us all something good to him. Oh, yeah. With that mind. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind. Oh, with the mind. I myself serve the law I of God. I myself serve God's law. But with the flesh. With the flesh. The law of sin. That's where the conflict is. There's another law in your members, in your members. warring against the law of your mind. That's right. Don't you let your members defeat your mind. That's right. Let the spiritual mind break your members. Yeah. Always let the mind of God rule supreme within you. Hallelujah. When it rules supreme, your heart will be convicted. You'll find that man and woman starting to change even before, before they even get to water. The Lord starts dealing with their mind because he's dealt with their ear. That's right. When they heard this, they were bricked in their heart. That's right. And God and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? In the second chapter of Acts, then Peter said unto them, Repent. Yeah. Glory to God. He wants you to repent. He wants you to be convicted. He wants you to be sorry, brother and sister. 
Repent. And be baptized. Time to go down in water. How much? Every one of them. Thanks be unto God, every one of you. In, in the, the name, name of Jesus Christ. That's the name above all other names. For the remission of sins. To get your sins washed away. And what did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you have the Holy Ghost, you're filled with God. You're filled with the Spirit of God. That's right. Anybody want to be right tonight? And be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet. If you want to be baptized, stand on your feet. Glory oh, to God. All of you that are standing, follow them in the back. All of you that are standing, glory oh, to God. Wonderful. That's wonderful, isn't it? You got to have God mind. Amen. Thirty, thirty-seven was baptized last night in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody in the world need God's mind. That's right. After you repent of your sins. That mind that led you to water, ask God to help you to keep it. Keep it. You don't want to go to water and knock off. That's right. Ask God to keep that mind. And you'll find yourself after you're baptized seeking him for the Holy Ghost Amen. with all sincerity. And in the midst of you seeking him, you're striving to obey him. Obey him. For he gives the Holy Ghost to those that obey him. That obey him. And obey him. Not those that ignore him. No. And we are his witnesses of these Listen things. Listen at this. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 32. We are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Yes. Whom God has given to them. God has given to them. That obey him. God mm. give the Holy Ghost to those that obey him. Seek the Lord, believe in him, trust in him, but obey him. That's it. Obedience. Better than sacrifice. Better than all your singing or jumping or shouting. That's right. Come on back tomorrow. Come on back tomorrow. Hallelujah. God Almighty is good, yeah. Come on back tomorrow. Prayer will begin at 11 o'clock. God will. Come in here. You don't have to wait till 11. If you come before 11, don't sit and be talking. Don't even sit and start reading your Bible. The moment you come in those doors, hit your knees. That's right. You come in the doors, Hit your knees. Cry out to God for the Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid to pray. He's a God that's right at hand. And, all right, when we dismiss, I'm going to ask everyone that departs, don't interrupt those in the back because they're trying to get situated for baptism. So the different exits that are available, let's guide them out and whatnot. So we can get everybody straight and not interfere with all of them that's getting ready to be baptized. All right, let us all stand. We're going to ask Elder Ben from North Carolina to close us out in prayer. Read us, everybody. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for this youth convention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the souls that have been down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for overseeing the word he preached tonight, Lord God. We touch hearts and minds and souls, Lord God. Oh God, we give you honor, God. We give you the glory. We give you praise. We ask you, Lord God, send your Holy Ghost upon the bodies tonight. Send them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that they obey you, Lord God. Well, Lord, we thank you for the work that you're doing. 
through this ministry, Lord God, through the truth of God. God, we give you honor, glory, and praise. We bless you, blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. We leave it tonight, Lord God, with our hearts prepared for tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, we lay down tonight. Keep us, Lord God. Protect us. And thanks as they dismiss from this place, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you honor and praise. Peace be unto everybody in the name of Jesus Christ.